it's a wooden bouquet of sorts of drop spindleage. Ba -da -da. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Kristen, also known as Vine on Ravelry, on Instagram, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs and the knitting community. Thanks so much for checking this video out. I thought I would do a quick little video sharing with you uh, my spindle collection uh, because I have recently started dipping my toes back into drop spindling and I've been getting asked quite a bit about which drop spindles I use and which spindles I would recommend for beginner spindleists. Spindleists, is is that a is that a real term? This is where I keep my spindles in this clear vase. I just think it looks really nice on the shelf. Uh, it's 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 a wooden bouquet of sorts of drop spindleage. I thought I would take you through each of them. There are about 10 in here, which is crazy sauce. But just a little disclaimer before I get into things, I am by no means an expert drop spindleist, spinner, or what have you. This is just my personal journey, so to speak, uh, when it comes to drop spindling. Uh, what spindles I learned on and came to enjoy using. Your mileage may vary, so these are just my personal recommendations. Uh, it is not set in stone anywhere. But yeah, let's get into my drop spindles. So I think we should start with my very first drop spindle. Uh, this is, it's actually broken now that I'm looking at it. I don't know how that happened. This is a drop spindle, a top world drop spindle by Seven Yaks, and she has a shop on Etsy. And I will of course link to all these drop spindles in the description box below so you can easily uh, see where you can get your hands on some of these. And this was actually gifted to me by my good friend, uh, Kim, who used to have the Craft Stash podcast. She gifted this to me on my 30th birthday, which was over five years ago, craziness. The funny story behind this one was I had my party at a bar. <laughs> so there's a lot of dancing, a lot of drinking. And Kim gifted this to me at the bar and she said, you know, girl, you have to learn how to drop spindle. And she basically created a monster. I immediately picked it right up and learned how to spin. And Kim, if you're watching this, I love you. Thank you so much for bringing spinning into my life. But yeah, the, the story did not end there. Turns out I left the drop spindle at the bar and then had to call them the next morning to see if, <laughs> just just imagine trying to explain to someone working at a bar what a drop spindle is. Do you happen to see a long stick with a snowflake disc around it and a hook? I'll just leave the rest to your imagination. But anyway, thankfully they still had it and I just went there the next day, picked it up. Uh, but yeah, this will forever hold that memory and I am never letting, never letting this go. 70 X. It's a wonderful, it, it was a wonderful drop spindle to learn on. I highly recommend it. I think it's a little bit more over an ounce uh, in weight. This is very special to me. This next spindle is a spindle by Golding. The whorl is made of ebony wood in the middle here. It's two inches in diameter. Uh, again, another top whorl spindle that is so wonderfully balanced. Again, uh, definitely an investment piece. It's, it's a lot smaller than the first one that I showed you, then the Seven Yaks. It has an ebony wood inlay and has this really cool gold frame around the whorl and it is incredibly well balanced. I love it. It weighs approximately 1.85 ounces, so just under an ounce, uh, which is my usually my go-to weight for drop spindles. I love spinning with drop spindles under about an ounce. It allows you to create these really fine, thin singles. Your mileage may vary. You might like spinning really thick yarns or thicker yarns. In that case, I would always recommend going up to a heavier weight spindle, like maybe over four ounces or three or four ounces to get a weightier or a heavier weight yarn. This next one, I believe it might've been my second or third drop spindle, but you, if you are familiar with drop spindle, you've probably seen this one floating around. Uh, this is the Trindle by Trindleman on Etsy. And this is one of his smaller models. It's a carbon shaft uh, with malachite uh, beaded arms. And the cool thing about the Trindle is that you can take off the arms. You can mix and match the arms. They just come off. Uh, this part right here, the bulb in the middle that uh, you can just insert the arms into, you can interchange them. So if you want to change the weight of the trindle, uh, it's really cool for that. Uh, or just customize it to your personality because he does offer a wide variety of different fun arms that you can mix and match, add, and uh, you know, the like. So really cool. Definitely check out uh, Trindle Man on Etsy. This next spindle is really special. It is a spindle by the Spanish Peacock, which 
When I purchased it, it was really hard. It was like the elusive unicorn. You had to catch an update and if you missed out, you missed out. But uh, it is absolutely beautiful. It has a laser cut snowflake in this really gorgeous holly uh, wood. Um, and again, it's a top whirl spindle. It's very lightweight. I wanna say that it weighs about uh, maybe a little bit over an ounce. Uh, the one thing that I'm not crazy about the spindle, the whirl doesn't have a notch to rest your yarn singles on as you uh, spin with it, uh, which again is not a huge deal, but I feel like it just kind of, the notch helps keep that yarn in place and stabilize the yarn as you're spinning with it. So without the notch, it just has a tendency to slip and slide. Again, not an issue for me, but that just bear in mind that's what could happen. This next one that I'm gonna talk about is really, really fun. It's, while I don't really use this spindle at all anymore, and I'll tell you why, uh, it's just a really fun piece that I, I'm so happy that I have in my spindle collection. This is a spindle by Aaron Make Stuff, and if you can see really closely, it is made out of the tops of colored pencils. Of course, it has like my signature colors in there, some purple, some mauves, and some silver, and just Oh, I love this thing so much. It's so fun. And of course, of course there's glitter. It's a heavier weight uh, top roll spindle. I use this more so for plying uh, singles together as opposed to spinning singles uh, because it's a heavier weight spindle. I'm not saying that you can't spin singles on here. You most certainly can, especially those heavier weight yarns. However, I just find for some reason the spindle isn't as well balanced as some of my other ones. It makes for a little wibbly wobbly timey wimey. For me, this is kind of like a novelty spindle. Really fun to look at. I really like using this for plying yarns as opposed to spinning singles. Uh, just that's my personal opinion. This one does have a notch for the yarn to rest in as you're spinning with it, uh, which I really like. It's actually camouflaged uh, between the colored pencils right there. This next spindle might not look like anything I've showed you so far, and that is because you are correct. It is a Fong or Fang style spindle. It is by Ghostworks on Etsy. I get a lot of my spindles from Etsy, I have to say, uh, because yeah, that is where all the handmade spindles, most of them, seem to come from. But yes, again, this is a Fong style supported spindle. And by supported, I mean that uh, you need to use a spindle bowl with it. So if you can see at the base of the spindle right here, there's a metal piece and that helps give it that, you know, spin when it's in the bowl. The top of the spindle is heavily pointed, so I totally forget how to spin with this, but if I, my memory serves me right, you have to flick the the fiber as you're spinning with it off the top of this tip, which is relatively sharp. So yeah, I mean, you can spin with this, you can slay vampires, it's very versatile. Next up is a very basic top whirl drop spindle. This is the High Low Spindle by Schacht, and you can, you can pretty much pick this up at any local yarn shop. It cost me about $20 US. I actually purchased this at Gage Intention in Brooklyn when um, Michelle Wong had her, her pop-up shop called Gage Intention. Uh, I was hanging out there for a knit night, or was it a knit night? I think it was just, I was having a trunk show there or something, and I, left my drop spindle at home and I was and I was surrounded by all this beautiful fiber and I really just wanted to drop spindle. So <laughs> Michelle had these for sale at her shop and I was like, you know what, it's only 20 bucks. Bought some fiber, bought my spindle and I was I was ready to go and it it spins it spins beautifully. So I would say that this is a really, really great beginner spindle. If you're looking not to spend too much money, uh, if you're just dipping your toes and want to get a feel for drop spindling, this is the way to go, I think, in my in my humble opinion. It has the shocked uh, symbol right there, and it also has a notch. You can get a decent, uh, I want to say, fingering weight single, fingering to DK weight single out of this. Uh, again, really great for beginners. And this is my very first Turkish spindle by Subterranean Woodworks. It has a birch and walnut inlay uh, design over here, and you guys, I love this spindle so much. It is so well made. It's tiny, but mighty. It doesn't feel delicate. It can take a beating, not that you would beat it up or drop it on purpose or anything, but if it falls, you don't have to worry about, this can take a lot of um, wear and tear. And I, I've had this for, I don't know how long, and I love it. And yeah, it just comes apart, super portable. Uh, you know, it comes apart in little pieces. And again, super lightweight. It weighs 0.56 ounces. Uh, and it's just, again, another investment piece. I believe this cost me like $55 US, but it lasts and it does a really lovely job of spinning. It's very well balanced. 
Sticking on the topic of Turkish spindles, this is my most recent purchase. This is the Jenkins Lark Turkish spindle. And as you can see, I still have fiber on it. And I purchased this at Rhinebeck 2017 last year. And I love the spindle so much. It is so incredibly lightweight, so well made. And I really like that uh, he signs he signs all of his spindles at the bottom with the weight and the wood. So it actually says 2017 uh, ebony, 0.95 ounces, 27 grams, and yeah, so you have all your information on here, and it is just such a well-made spindle. This one, I will say, is a little bit more fragile. You want to take a little bit more care of it. You don't want to just be tossing it around. They're not as fast to spin with as top whirl spindles, or I guess bottom whirl spindles. They take a little bit more time and effort and care when you're spinning with them, but I really love this uh, kind of basket weave pattern that is created when you're winding the when you're winding your singles onto the arms. You have to go over two, under one, over two, under one. It creates this really cool effect, and it's very it's almost like color therapy. I want to say it's very zen, very relaxing. Uh, again, not as fast as a top roll spindle if speed is what you're after. Uh, but again, it's just it looks like a piece of art. This spindle was a total impulse buy uh, just because I thought it was so cool. Again, it's another Turkish spindle. It is a 3D printed spindle that, yes, glows in the dark. How freaking cool is that? And this is by Turtle Maid. She makes these really awesome 3D, print, 3D printed uh, spindles. So she has uh, Turkish spindles and she also has a top world spindle. She has a bunch of different uh, styles of spindles that you can choose from. And the cool thing is they come in different colors. You can mix and match. Really affordable. I think I purchased this one for about $10 US. Uh, and you know, they make really great gifts because yeah, if you know somebody in your life that loves to drop spindle or just learning to drop spindle, it's not a huge investment. And they are really fun to look at, uh, especially because you can mix and match all the colors. Uh, this one, I really love. It spins really great too. Last but not least, this is my favorite top roll spindle at the moment. It is the Bosworth Midi and clearly I own a lot of <laughs> a lot of very nice spindles that I take very good care of and I'm so grateful and lucky to have in my life. And even though I don't use all of them, the right fiber will call to the right spindle. That's what I always say. So anyway, this is my Bosworth spindle. It is made out of holly. It is about a little over an ounce and I don't know if you can see, but there is a little weight right here and then Bosworth embosses, <laughs> embosses his uh, name right here. So you know it's a Bosworth spindle. Uh, and again, I cannot recommend this, this spindle more. Every time I go to Rhinebeck, they have their booth there and I'm always tempted and I just, I never, took the plunge, but one day I was home, it was my birthday, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna treat myself to a Bosworth spindle because one of my friends had purchased one. I think it was like their moosey, which is made out of <laughs> uh, moose horn. So if you're a vegan, probably not the spindle for you. Uh, but yeah, it just, I really enjoyed the feel of it and I decided there and then that I wanted one for myself. So highly recommend the Bosworth spindle. While I love all of my spindles equally as if they were my own children, do you have a couple of favorites that I like to use regu reg regularly? Regu I can never pronounce that on the first try. There are a few that I really do enjoy using on a regular basis and that would have to be my Jenkins Finch. It's a bit larger than the Subterranean Woodworks Micro Spindle. I love this size, I love the way it spins and it just, it just makes me so happy and again, I really do enjoy the Zen quality of a Turkish spindle. And then of course, I really do love, love, love my Bosworth. I, this has to be my ultimate favorite because it just spins incredibly well. Uh, and yeah, it's again, it, you know, speed drop spindling is what you're after. Well balanced and top roll drop spindling for me is pretty fast compared to um, other spindling methods. But if you're new to spinning and want to just dip your toes to try it out or want to gift a spindle to a friend and don't want to spend an arm and a leg on an investment piece spindle, then these are the spindles that I would recommend. My first recommendation would be the Shaft High Low Spindle. It's basic, it's wood, it's solid, it's got a nice weight to it, it's not that expensive. Again, I paid about maybe $20 US for this little guy. Again, there's no right or wrong spindle to learn on. The best spindle to learn on is the one that you have. A top roll spindle just happens to be the style of spindle that I learned to spin on and would probably teach someone wanting to know how to drop spindle. Next up, if you want to learn on a Turkish spindle as opposed to a top roll spindle, I 
definitely recommend Turtle Maid. Again, she also makes top roll spindles uh, as well. I actually picked up a couple of these for friends as holiday gifts, so they really enjoyed them, I think. But again, I also recommend the Turtle Maid 3D printed spindles uh, as a great starting point for a newbie drop spindler. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my little tour of all of the drop spindles I seem to have amassed over the years. And yeah, hopefully this has inspired you to pick up a drop spindle and learn or kind of give you a little insight into what drop spindle uh, you want to start out with. Again, these are just my opinions uh, and what I would recommend to a friend asking uh, where to begin with drop spindling. Uh, if you have any suggestions, le please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear what drop spindle you learned to spin on uh, and what drop spindles you would recommend to a newbie spinner. And yeah, just leave some comments below. I'm really curious. Uh, and if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe below uh, and just leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys as always. And that said, I will see you on the podcast this Thursday. Happy knitting, happy spinning, and I'll see you next time. Bye!